you're known as the measurement queen. Uh, that's a dubious distinction, I would say. <laughs> why, why do you consider yourself the measurement queen? Well, I'm, I'm queen because I've been doing this longer than almost anybody. We actually started measuring social media back in 1995, um, starting with news groups. And um, I had a client who said, there's this internet thing, you need to measure it. And I don't know, I said, okay, I can do that. And had no idea how, but that's when we started. So I've been doing it for a long time. And what's interesting is, is I may be queen, but it's a very small kingdom. Is the kingdom growing? Yes, yes. In times of, in times of recession, uncertain times, what happens is, is people need data to decide what works and what doesn't work. So they, the more fearful they become, the more they want data, the better we do. That's great. You've been doing it a long time, but it started as PR. As a matter of fact, I think one of the first times I met you, we were up on a stage at a now obsolete conference, duking it out because I didn't agree with what you were doing. How is PR and measuring PR any different than measuring social media? It's actually, social media is actually much more complicated. We started out, when we first started doing social media measurement, we thought that, you know, positive, negative, neutral, and, you know, here's a subject category and here's that and the other, this, you know, the, the, there's got to be an equivalent of a headline mention, right? It doesn't work that way. There are 27 different types of comments that you can have. There's about 28 different categories of postings and discussion groups. It's much, much more complicated. But because we have all those different data points, it's, it's actually much more actionable. You've heard it before. You can categorize it. You can subdivide it. You can dig into it. But how do you actually measure a conversation? What is it about a conversation that you measure? Well, many years ago, decades ago actually, almost about the same time I was starting in the business, um, a guy named uh, Professor Jim Grunig at the University of Maryland actually came up with ways of measuring relationships. And he, again, categorized relationships into six different types and said, okay, let's figure out questions that will test the presence or absence of these types of relationships. So he came up with these 75 questions. I don't know anybody but him who's actually used all 75, but you can actually ask people if they agree or disagree with a statement such as, this company treats people like me, uh, people like me fairly or justly. Um, I, this company or this organization can be relied upon to keep its word. So these specific statements he came up with, he then tested for about a decade. He and a bunch of graduate students and everybody else on the planet have tested these things. And they are accurate predictors of how people feel, whether they trust you, whether they think you're credible, whether they're satisfied with this conversation that's going on, and whether they feel like they're in control of the conversation as much as you are. You know, who's in control of the conversation is a big piece of, is it a good conversation or bad conversation? You bring the human element in this. So, so Help me understand what you do and how it works with Radiant 6, who we've already interviewed, and BuzzLogic, who we are interviewing as well. Well, if you think about it, what Radiant 6 and BuzzLogic and all those people do is they teach computers how to think like humans, right? That's basically what they're doing. We take it the next step and say, okay, you've got a computer that's sort of simulating a human. We simulate your customers. So we go down and say, if it's Dell, you know, it might be a, you know, somebody in the market for a computer, which means that they have to at least have electricity and a need for a computer. If it's um, uh, ASPCA, it's somebody who cares about animals because, you know, somebody who hates animals is never going to get a dime to the ASPCA. If it's Georgia Tech, it's, um, you know, it's a, a high school student, you know, with an interest in engineering. So we create a team of people that basically looks at your social media and frequently your traditional media as well from the perspective of your target audience. If there's a 20 or something year old guy who says, I got my new computer and it's wicked bad, you know, the computer is going to rate that as a negative article. Yep. If there's a story about the HP Pavilion having, you know, the reunion of the Grateful Dead, that's going to get a huge amount of coverage for a concert hall rather than a laptop. That's the problem with computers. So you need the human element to make sure it's correct. I mean, you can teach them a lot, but it only takes it that far. Then you need the human element to actually 
get the actual information out of it. The other piece of the human element is, fine, you got a bunch of data, so what? What does it matter? The only thing that, that, that measurement does is, I mean, I have a saying that is, you know, without insight, it's all just trivia. And with insight, you can say, okay, I did X. I, I put this up on my website. I woke up the toxicologist and got our blogger to interview the toxicologist at four o'clock in the morning. And we headed up there by the time the morning talk shows went on there and we got a huge increase in traffic to our blog and therefore um, at the same time subsequent to that and in fact correlated with that is $250,000 worth of additional donations to the ASPCA. Tell me more about this ASPCA thing. <laughs> well, ASPCA is one where, where it is. It's, the nonprofit sector is actually wonderfully measurable because typically they have websites that are designed to um, make it very easy to become members and make it very easy to donate and they have all these web analytics that say I went here at this time and I went to this part of the site and I donated and whatever. That's the easy part. The, the corporate world is a little bit more challenging but for example one of the things that we did was we we've been looking at everything from news groups to blog postings for a particular printer manufacturer for a number of years and what didn't make any sense is when you looked at the tone of these postings positive, negative, and neutral, and visibility, you know, how prominent was the brand name mentioned and all the rest of the stuff. You know, it was perfectly good data. It just didn't jibe with anybody's sales records. I mean, if you looked at the sales records and you looked at the data, it just didn't make any sense, and we couldn't figure it out. So again, we went back in and we looked at a different type of online media, which is structured review sites like Amazon.com mm -hmm. and BizRate and things like that. And in those sites, the tonality, the positive and negative, was completely the opposite of what had been in the traditional media and in the in like the websites, the TechCrunch and the end gadgets and stuff like that. The the sort of media things said one thing, consumers were saying something else. And when we looked at that, that correlated much more closely to actual sales. Hmm. Now that is interesting. So it's what that says is is and this is the challenge. And when you ask you know tough times, it's it's um, the challenge is, is that now I've got a limited budget. Do I take money away from outreach to the Engadget blogger and put it into the consumer piece? The answer is, is yes. Georgia Tech is in the middle of a wonderful project which basically says before I spend any money on social media, I want to know there's all these options out there. There's social bookmarking sites, there's Facebook, there's Second Life, there's YouTube. Where do I spend my money? Well, we haven't quite finished this study. You're going to see some of it this afternoon, but the conclusion is probably YouTube. You know, if I had to say one thing, uh, you know, it's, it's in terms of ROI, it's probably YouTube and not anything else. Social bookmarking sites. Uh, delicious, not so much. Dig, yes stumble upon probably. Um, so that's the kind of thing that people are actually saying, okay, I'm, I'm measuring my, my brand and all these things so that I can make better decisions about where I put my money. Can you name me some of the companies uh, that you're working with? Um, you know, technology companies like Juniper Networks. We work with um, a lot of the um, defense con companies. How wet are the feet of our defense industry in the Not, U.S.? At the moment, very really tippy toe, tippy, tippy toe? toe. Okay, they're going to have to replace a lot of engineers that are retiring in the next few years. And what they know is is that they they're never going to. If you were an engineer, they would probably know that you would never come to work for Raytheon. They can target people. It's that political thing. Yeah, it's that political yeah. thing. Okay. But, but people who are patriotic, who come from military families or whatever, that's their best target. But how do you reach those people? You're going to reach them. You're not going to reach them at a recruiting fair where everybody sits behind a table. You're going to reach them by having a conversation with them mm -hmm. on Facebook or MySpace or something like that. Yeah. So that's where they're getting, that's how they're getting into the conversation. Yeah. But, and I have one more story. I have, God, I'm so excited about this because I, I um, two completely opposite companies. One company that should blog and one company that should not. And um, one is a cell phone company. 
And we did this whole big social media project for them and showed them that, you know, in fact, they, they were all worried, you know, oh my God, social media, they're gonna say something bad about us. <laughs> and, and I said, you know what, guys, it's, um, you don't have anything bad out there. You really don't. You've got like 2% negative, stop worrying about it. And he was like, well, yeah, but so what? You know, I don't understand this. So I added in the suckiness factor. And I literally just looked up on Technorati uh, T-Mobile sucks, Sprint sucks, uh, Verizon sucks, you name it, and, um, and developed the suckiness quotient and showed them that, in fact, relative to the competition, they had a very low quotient. Now, there's a traditional advertising campaign right there. We suck less than the other guys. <laughs> well, what I see banners on what's, Yahoo. <laughs> what's hysterical is, is the fact that yeah. rather than, rather than yeah. engaging in a conversation, yeah. because this guy would be a perfect <clears throat> blogger. Anyway, yeah. no, they didn't have anything to worry about. They stopped worrying about it. Complete opposite is a company that is a um, uh, conglomerate. It doesn't actually make things. It owns companies that have consumer brands, but they don't actually make anything. And they are exactly the wrong people to be involved in social media. I mean, you know, there's some members of the organization that are somewhat political. There's all these things. You just look at it and say, and I think I may have actually preferred them to you at one point to say, you know, shall you tell them not to do this? But they really, they're reluctant. I'd rather they, write about what they're doing yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, anyway, so they started a social media measurement program. And um, not that they were going to actually actively engage in blogs, in, but they, you know, they were monitoring and they were commenting and they were you know, basically just being part of the conversation. And I was getting ready for this presentation and I was looking at their data. Their negatives have gone from like 50% down to 10% simply by being part of the conversation. Wow, and impressive. And without even, without having a blog, without having any outreach whatsoever, with just being part of the conversation. That is amazing. Katie, thank you for your time. I think you're gonna have a very good few years. Thank you, I hope so.